Welcome back, Maverick Traders. It is your market roundup for February 12th. Corey here with you. Let's jump into it. So we're going to take a look at broad equity markets, commodities, uh, what sectors are heating up, which ones are cooling off. And then we're going to highlight some bullish, some neutral, and some bear ideas. Disclaimer. This video was created for professional stock and option traders. Maverick Trading is a proprietary trading firm that employs professional traders around the world. Our traders trade firm capital and keep 70 to 80 percent of profits they generate. All trades and analysis in this video are for professional traders only. If you are interested in becoming a professional trader for Maverick, click the apply button in the video description. Let's break down what happened today. So today we come off the weekend and equities mixed. You see the Dow slightly higher, S&P and NASDAQ lower. The Russell 2000, if there's one bright spot, it's that this rally broadened out. So the leadership groups took a step back. They were flat on the day. Russell 2000, which encompasses a lot of stocks, a lot of companies, up 1.82% on the day. So that was a welcome sign. Oil up 0.6%, gold slightly lower. Daily news, Arm Holdings is on a rocket ship tear. Last week it was up 60%. It was up another 30% today. And these, the reason I'm highlighting this is these are characteristics that you'll see in a blow-off top. When the market is essentially overheating, you're also seeing more speculative assets like Bitcoin continue to heat up. Bitcoin broke above the 50,000 level. That's what happens in a runaway blow-off top scenario. So we're probably in the midst of that, like we've been saying. Advanced decline line, 67% of stocks advancing today. And again, the rally broadened out. We've also seen improvement in the 50-day moving average back up to 63% of stocks above the 50 MA. So one day does not a trend make, but nice to see this rally spread out amongst other sectors, other groups. If you look at the equity markets, we've been on this run to the upside. It's not guaranteed to happen, but I suspect that at the finishing move, you're going to have a big, huge bullish run and big candle up here, big bullish candle that might fall off the highs. You know, it might be a long upper shadow, kind of look like this, where you fall way off the highs, but some sort of big exclamation point at the end of this thing, that will be the finish line. NASDAQ, same thing. I mean, we've continued to push to the upside. Today, quiet. I mean, down three-tenths of a percent is not that big a deal. It's kind of an inside day where your bearish candle fits inside of the prior day's bullish body, what they call a bearish harami candlestick pattern. Uh, remember, these are from the Japanese, and harami is body within. It's like um, a body within a body, right? So you have a bearish harami pattern, a little bit of those often happen in consolidations in sideways type of moves so we're in a little bit of a breather here if we look at this spread out these are the all the areas that were bright green these huge boxes these big market caps and today they calm down you saw energy pick up some pace you saw utilities which have been beaten down you saw other things that have been beaten down like nike and all these different areas of the market that had been underperforming we started to see some rotation now again one day does not a trend make but nice to see if this rally is going to continue for a little further you need some of these areas that have been struggling to at least stabilize and start to help out the index a little because frankly we're probably a little top heavy at this point in time so the trend the momentum everything still exists on the upside there's no changes to market outlook but as we highlight some different ideas it's a little bit of a different picture specifically because I'm going to highlight one of those big name tech companies on the bearish side Apple uh, nobody, well, Microsoft has now overtaken Apple in total market cap. I was going to say nobody bigger. There is one company bigger, that's Microsoft. But let's take a look at some bullish and bearish names. First, on the long side. So if you're looking at a bullish candidate, look, GM is not the first thing that would come to your mind, but even as Tesla is struggling and in a big bear market, 
This thing is high basing up here. Looks poised for another run to the upside. So GM, very strong. It broke out here on a gap, left that gap open, has consolidated, should have more upside here in the near term. Another stock that you can play more to the upside, JP Morgan Chase, JPM. These are companies that are not high flyers. They're certainly not big in like the tech space and that sort of thing. Yet they're they've been consolidating. And if this rally's broadening out, these are the type of names that should start to have their moment in the sun. So I'm interested in JP Morgan. Uh, General Motors, things like that that have consolidated nicely and look like they might be on the cusp of a breakout. On the bearish side, I look at those big tech names and Apple really sat out that rally. And the relative weakness that Apple has, has really shown in the last couple of months is pretty severe. Compare it to Amazon's and Microsoft's and all these different companies' charts. Compare it to Meta, you know, formerly known as Facebook. That company has blown Apple uh, away of late. So you look at Apple and we're in a bit of a descending triangle, right? I didn't draw that very well, but kind of dot the line here at the support. And I'm going to call it the 180 price level. And then you have these lower highs, so you have a descending triangular pattern, lower highs and equal lows. And I suspect not only are we on our way towards that low again down at 180, we'll probably pierce that low if we get down there again. So Apple, um, out of all the candidates, looks pretty solid on the bearer side. And there's not a lot of candidates to highlight for a downside trade. Markets are in this blow off top mode. So some things, some wild things are going to happen. We're seeing it in arm holdings. We're seeing it in this dash for more aggressive, riskier assets like Bitcoin. That's kind of what you're seeing. But Goldilocks, we think this perfect market for stocks is starting to come to an end because We've seen inflation come down. We've seen jobs stay strong. We've seen the economy hold up. We've seen all these things, these dominoes really fall into place. But now you get into the nitty gritty where the market needs or wants the Fed to cut rates. And yet CPI is still at 3 point, you know, 3%. You're still seeing inflation too high. And notice we've got a CPI number out tomorrow. Uh, this is going to show, I think, that inflation and remind the markets that inflation is still too high. It is still above the Fed's mandate and target of 2%. So they do not have price stability. They've got good employment numbers and the Fed has two mandates, two things that they have to do. Price stability, which they still don't have perfectly under control and the job situation, full employment. Well, they've got employment under control. They don't have prices. And so they need to keep rates higher. And that should be a little bit of a negative and kind of say this perfect environment, this Goldilocks scenario is starting to probably be in its late stages here. Airbnb, Applied Materials, uh, CME Group, Cisco, Deer, DraftKings, Coke, uh, Kraft Heinz, Occidental Petroleum, Shopify, lots of companies reporting still plenty to keep you busy. Hope you enjoyed this market roundup. Have a great week ahead. We'll see you next time.